like a swarm of locusts. The Mongol horde emerged from the east, driven by a madman named Genghis Khan. When we first heard the rumors of their approach, we thought the Mongols were but mere bands of raiders, not unusual on the steppes. But when spies from the east told us that the Mongols had utterly destroyed the Persian Empire, putting its civilians to the sword and burning its cities to ash in three short years, we realized that we had severely underestimated them. Not much later, our own people faced this new scourge. Our Kipchak brethren to the east fought bravely, but were easily defeated, and several of their Khans were captured. The Mongols buried the Kipchak Khans alive underneath a podium on which the Mongol commander, Subutai Bakhotur, sat to celebrate his victory. The Mongols called it an honorable death, only reserved for nobility and royalty. I believe that these Mongols are evil demons sent to torture us. Only the western part of our once mighty confederation remains, and with it, the great Cumania has become a mere shadow of its former self. However, one of the Khans, Gautium, recognizes our peril and is rallying all of the tribes to unite against the invaders. Putting aside his pride, he has turned to our sworn enemies, the Rus, and is asking them to join the fight. They may be hostile towards us, but we have no other choice. The Mongols will scourge this earth and enslave everyone on it. Let us hope that the Rus princes come to realize that too, before it is too late. The Rus principalities were not easy to persuade. However, when news reached the Rus princes that a large Mongol army was riding west toward the Dnieper River, they accepted Gautian's offer. Now, a united army of Rus soldiers and human horsemen stand together to face the incoming Mongol horde. It is a magnificent sight to behold as our combined armies march to meet the Mongols on the field of battle. Beams of sunlight dance on the shields of the Rus foot soldiers, the full body armor of the boyars, and the iron-clad human horsemen. If this odd coalition of Rus and humans can stand united, we might have a chance of withstanding this scourge from the east. The sky has turned dark with the smoke of burning tar. Through it, one can see the bodies of men and horses scattered on the battlefield. Despite our large numbers, our armies were swept away from this earth like dust on the field. The Mongols knew perfectly how to exploit our weaknesses and divide our forces. The wounds of the charging Mongol horsemen sounded like thunder, and their arrows poured down on us like rain. Smoking projectiles fired by Mongol catapults caused confusion among our ranks and blocked our line of sight. We saw Rus princes charge into the smoke, never to be seen again. After nine long days, the combined Rus and Cuman armies were completely annihilated. Morale is at an all-time low for those who survived. We Cumans know that all hope is lost for our ancestral homeland. To escape certain death or slavery, we will retreat beyond the Dnieper River to rally and ride west. At least Khan Gautian survived the battle, which gives us a tiny bit of light in these dark times. His calm presence and confident voice can still give hope to the men. When looking into the empty eyes of the men sitting in front of the yurts, it is hard to imagine that these men were once fierce steppe horsemen, warriors who were feared by European kings and Byzantine emperors alike. Our Khan is devastated by the recent events as well, and has not eaten since the battle. Each time Gautian emerges from his tent, his face appears older and more gaunt. Pressured by the Mongol horde, 
We have no other choice than to keep moving south. At night, Tatar and Mongol raiding parties ambush Cuman guards who wander too far away from the camp. It would be yet another sleepless night for the men. Although many of us had given up hope, Khan Kotian still believed in our survival. The messengers that he had sent west returned with good news. Even though we did not expect much grace from the Europeans that we raided for so many centuries, King Bela IV of Hungary offered our people asylum in his country. For the first time in months, our people rejoiced. However, before we leave for Hungary, we must first save our kinsmen trapped by Mongol and Tatar raiders in nearby Wallachia. The situation is dire, but news reached us that a fellow Khan named Gurgen is fighting off the enemy raids, trying to rescue our people. If we can reach him in time and rally the remaining tribes, we might have a chance of saving what is left of the free humans. Although our people numbered up to 40,000 men, women and children, the Hungarian king welcomed us with open arms. Hungarians and Cumans greeted each other amicably and festivities ensued for days. Our leaders were baptized by the Hungarian priests and many of our people followed their example. When the festivities end, we will settle in the Hungarian valleys, set up our yurts there and send our herds out to the fields. Everything seems to be better now. Still, we should not get too comfortable with the Mongol army converging on the Hungarian border. Our horsemen will help the Hungarians defend their lands, but we are not the only ones who have come to their aid. Duke Frederick of Austria, an old rival of King Bela, has come to Hungary with a company of heavy armored German knights. We are suspicious of these strangers, but there is no time for internal squabbling, not in such dire times. Treachery. While attending a lavish feast thrown by a Hungarian lord, Khan Kotian was murdered in cold blood by Hungarian and German knights. Our people are outraged and are out for blood. The Hungarians think we will scatter without Kotian's leadership, but they are wrong. They have united us in pursuit of one goal, to avenge the death of our one true Khan. Our clan leaders have come together and taken an oath according to the old human traditions. With sword in hand over a dead dog cut in two, they swear not to dismount their horses until Kotian's death has been paid back in blood. If our leaders fail to honor their oath, their own clansmen will ensure that they suffer the same fate as the dog that they swore the oath upon. That is the way of the Cumans. We will act before the combined armies of Frederick and the Hungarian lords arrive. We know that there is a safe haven to the south in Bulgaria. The Bulgarian emperor is of Cuman descent and is ready to provide safe passage for our elderly and young. In the meantime, all men and women able to mount a horse will venture out to raid the Hungarian countryside. Our vengeance will be swift and thorough. We will show no mercy. Hungary will burn. We left no stone unturned and spared no living being. Every shack, hovel and hut was burned to the ground, all livestock killed and all farms trampled to dust. After we had plundered the last village before crossing into Bulgaria, I looked over my shoulder and saw nothing but a nightmarish vision of red and black, as if we had brought hell to the surface of the earth itself. The Hungarians will think twice in the future before double-crossing us. After we left Hungary, weakened and defenseless, the Mongols invaded, defeated King Bela and his army, and devastated the country once more. 
The kingdom is in such a poor state that refugees say that the church bells in Hungary have been quiet for weeks, and wild animals now roam the streets of the cities. King Bela fled to Austria, where Duke Frederick used the king's weak position to extort land and make him swear fealty to the Holy Roman Emperor. Just like us, King Bela fell for the treachery of the Austrian Duke and the Hungarian nobles. Our people stand at the crossroads. We received a letter from King Bela pleading with us to return to Hungary and help him deal with those who wronged us. Many of our leaders are not convinced and still wish to go to Bulgaria. It is not an easy decision, but it is I who have to make it. For I am the new great Khan of the Cumans, and they depend on my wisdom. I am no Kotian, but I will follow in his footsteps and ensure the survival of our people and their legacy, something which he had fought so hard for. It has been years since I last saw the lands of my ancestors. Although I still often find myself awash in fond memories of my younger years on the Eurasian steppes, I do not grieve, for it is fate that has led us here. Our people have spread out to all corners of the world, leaving a strong mark on it. In Hungary, the daughter of Kotian married the eldest son of King Bela, and many of our people live there in peace now. The Cumans, who were enslaved and sold by the Mongols years ago, have carved out a new empire in the Middle East. I even heard that these Mamluks, as they are now called, have defeated the Mongol army invading Syria, halting their relentless expansion once and for all. Much blood has been spilled, but I can see a bright future for the people of former Cumania. One where we, like our ancestors before us, will keep on shaping the records of history. <laughs>